All right, mates, good day. <laughs> You're not Australian. You're supposed to be South African. Whatever. In my hands is a replica of the R4 Vector, or the Vector R4 from South Africa. of you guys out there I know you history buffs you're looking at it and you're like hey that looks like a Galil yeah you know why because the Vector R4 made in South Africa was a licensed copy of the Galil AR from IMI now the original gun the parent gun was developed in the late 60s going into the early 70s and was adopted by Israel in 1972 officially and it saw a lot of service in the Middle East and so forth. Unsurprisingly, the Galils found their way into Africa. The South Africans, for whatever reason, well, I guess they were looking at the R1 that was designed and released in 1953, and they're looking at the modern world. They're looking at the United States and NATO, and they've all adopted the 556 NATO cartridge. So the South Africans said to themselves, well, that's the wave of the future. That's what everyone's doing. We need a 5.56 rifle, but we want our own rifle. We want to build it ourselves. So they decided to build the Vector R4, which is a 5.56 NATO chambered gun. Now, if you look at this gun, you say, man, that, that looks almost like if an AR and an AK got together and had a love child. And it kind of is because the magazine, obviously it is a 5.56 magazine, but it rocks in like, just like the R1 did or like an AK did. It has an ambidextrous magazine release here, but, that's, but it's guarded so it doesn't get accidentally bumped. Now, as far as the safety is concerned, right here what we have is we have an AK style safety because the internals are not an exact replica but they're very close to the Kalashnikov. So we've got what looks like an AK safety. You flick it down, now it's ready to fire. When it's up, you see there's a hole here, obviously, where the mechanism travels. When it's up, it works as a dust cover. Now when this is down, on the other side, you can work the safety lever with your thumb. You can take it on, off, off, on with your thumb. So it actually is kind of a dual-sided deal. Uh, this gun is pretty much universally ambidextrous. Whether you're a righty or a lefty, you can use this gun. And if you look what they did with the charging handle, instead of like an AK, it's sticking out the side right here. They put it up so I can reach over the top with my left hand, rack it, work it. Or if I'm a lefty, I can do the same thing. Uh, if you look closely at this gun, obviously this has a custom aftermarket finish on it. Uh, kind of a, a, well, a bush camouflage finish. No baby poop on this, no baby poop, uh, but it is a bush camouflage. Uh, the original guns were black. Yes, I did add an aluminum forend to this. The original ones would have been polymer. Please forgive me. Uh, you've got adjustable sights. You've got peep sights in the rear. The original sights had tritium in them. You had a tritium insert rear and then you had a tritium insert front, but what you could do is you could fold those down and they'd be out of the way. Uh, so they were manufactured originally with either tritium or phosphorus, you know, reflective phosphorus, like your watch that you shine a light onto. Uh, as when they import these guns, they don't come with it. Uh, on the rear, on the rear, you say that looks like a folding stock. That's because it is a folding stock folds over like so. Yes, you can shoot the gun paratrooper style or commando style uh, with it folded. I wouldn't recommend it. It's not going to be very accurate. Uh, the reason that you would fold it is obviously because this might be tucked up under your arm uh, for jumping out of an airplane or a helicopter or whatever. The whole thing with side folding stocks, the side folding stock doesn't make the gun more tactical or more accurate or more deadly it just makes it more convenient to carry or to store 
that's it. So that's the deal with the side folding stock. It's a very strong stock, uh, very well made stock uh, on this one right here. And it's very similar to the Galil. Now, if you guys are history buffs, you know that the original Israeli Galil came in 5.56, but then they also had a larger version uh, in 7.62 NATO. Then they had a sniper version and so on and so forth. The, for the most part, the South Africans just stuck with the 5.56 R4 version. So there you go. Uh, this was officially adopted and it replaced the R1 in 1980. So you would have seen these, and you can still see these, all over Africa in the various bush wars. Now, one thing that you may notice, you say, why are you wearing an AK chest rig when this is a 5.56 gun, right? Well, because these magazines, now the standard magazine for the R4 was either a 35 round magazine or a 50 round magazine, that's right. They made 50 round magazines for these that stuck out about all the way down to here. The Galil or the and the Galil and the R1 use the exact same magazines, or R4. The Galil and the R4 use the same magazines. Uh, these magazines are about an inch to an inch and a half longer than an M16 magazine, a 30 round M16 magazine. So these these magazines are actually they're too long for standard M16 pouches, but they fit in AK pouches perfectly. They fit perfectly in AK pouches. So what was all over Africa <laughs> and what still is all over Africa? Not only AKs, but AK accessories. These would have been everywhere. The Selu Scouts used AK gear, they used AK pouches and so forth. This would have been something that a trooper could grab and easily use, he could put his R4 Vector magazines in here and they would fit perfectly. And of course they have grenade pouches because no soldier would leave home without his grenades, obviously. So ladies and gentlemen, just one more gun of the African Bush Wars, kind of unique. It's actually one of my favorite uh, 5.56 guns from that era. This would be the Vector R4 5.56 made in South Africa. Hey there folks, thanks for watching the video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Now I'd like to personally invite you to join us at GetSOTG.com. Sign up today and you'll never miss another article, radio show, or video. That's GetSOTG.com. Thanks a lot.